welcome to the show, everyone. This is Everything Under the Sun. My name is Ty, and I hope you all are doing very well. It's been a crazy week. I'm extremely tired right now. <laughs> I didn't get much sleep last night. And, you know, I was kind of unsure about how this whole recording thing was going to happen today. It's kind of crazy. I think I've spoken about this before. Just the motivation I have to <laughs> start recording is, is a little different in the mornings than when I actually start recording and kind of get myself going. But yeah, last night I I just had very little sleep, maybe like three hours of sleep. So running on fumes right now, uh, but it's it's all good. I worked out and that kind of got my blood pumping and it's sunny and warm outside. So, you know, I'm just going to enjoy the sunlight, ride it out and get as much done as I can today because today is going to be a pretty busy day. But yeah, I hope y'all have been doing well. It's been, you know, it's been getting warmer out, it's been getting nicer out and People are going out and doing things. Our our city, our town, small little area, started opening up things like restaurants and things a few weeks ago, like most places, started opening up businesses and whatnot. And now there's been like an increase in cases of uh, the coronavirus and now they're shutting things back down, which is kind of, I don't know, it seems very roundabout. And I definitely understand the need to kind of stimulate the economy with, you know, money coming in now, and especially in a town like that I live in where there's so many mom and pop shops, but it's still, you know, it's like, how, how how is there this, you know, there's got to be some kind of balance in some way. And I think that they're trying to move back to just like doing things, maybe order and take out, which I mean, I'm surprised they even opened up, you know, inside dining. I actually went out to a friend of mine was visiting in town. They had, they were dealing with some stuff and they had come into town and we had gone out to dinner and it was my first time actually eating in a restaurant. And like, I don't even know how long it's been months it's been yeah it's been a few months since I've been in the restaurant and it was a sushi restaurant it was actually about closing time so there weren't very, very many people in there at all but it was kind of just crazy to walk in and just see like no one wearing a mask or anything like that but I mean like also like you're eating in a restaurant so it's kind of counterintuitive in some ways but you know I don't know that's neither here nor there and yeah that's that's that but it's just something funny so stay safe out there it's getting warm out enjoy the weather you know be active, do do all the things that you love to do, but um, if those things involve partying with a bunch of people, then maybe, you know, chill. Or, I mean, do what you want because it's your life. So, that's basically that. Yeah, I, there's not really much else here. Again, like, I, I want to make these episodes with just me a little bit shorter, so I'm going to try to get to the point a little bit faster here. So, this week we have our topic, but we're going to figure out the topic for next week because I'm going to draw out of this box here and see yeah see what's coming up i mean sometimes i kind of forget what's in this box but it's it's always a surprise when it when it comes out and i realize i'm like what the what is this space oh man okay so the next topic the topic that was drawn is space and i mean it means like back the fuck up six feet no i'm just kidding space like space travel um you know like adventure this i mean like it's not like space travel and adventure and stuff like that but just like the vastness of space and the abyss and everything out there i mean the earth like everything that we know to be life life as we know it is just this floating rock in the middle of this abyss of space so it's it's really fascinating i'm not sure where i'm going to go with that because you know this space is so like you know spacey <laughs> So, I mean, it's, but it's, it should be an interesting topic. I, I may bring some stuff to it. I don't know. I've always been really fascinated with it. We'd watch like the travel, not travel channel. Well, I would watch the travel channel, but I would watch like the science channel and they would do like the cosmos and things like that. And I know some of you are very familiar with Neil deGrasse, Ty Neil deGrasse, <laughs> Neil, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I, I feel like I'm just butchering his name. Um, you know who I'm talking about. Anyway, uh, very, I mean, very intelligent man that speaks about, you know, space and, and stuff like that. So, I don't know, maybe maybe speak about him in a little bit, maybe get his name right at some point. But space. So that's going to go on the wall. Finding purpose is coming down because that is what we're going to be talking about today, which is, man, what a, what a topic. Finding purpose. I, sometimes I'm like, kind of thrown back by the topics that are put inside the box because again like I, I don't always remember what topics are being put in the box but when I do and I see what's there I'm like oh shit like this is this is a pretty heavy topic and I mean finding purpose I mean hell like this is 
the moment that we kind of realize that life is something so much bigger than, you know, being taken care of by our parents, we, we start like on this journey of, you know, what, what is life? You know, what is, what am I here for? What is this? What is this? What's the meaning in this situation? And I think that like, that's kind of, you know, that's, that's a lot bigger. I think that that idea of what am I here for? I think that's something that's maybe different than finding purpose. I think it's a little bit more, it's in the same domain, but I feel like it's more like an existential type of venturing in that way. And I'm going to speak some about that in a minute, because I think that that's a very important part of this, this idea of finding purpose. But, you know, when we think about finding purpose and, and thinking about the people that we feel have found purpose in their life, those attributes, those are just people that seem to be in some kind of flow state, in some kind of way that they're just kind of moving in they it seems like they know what they want to do it seems like they know where their their next step is going to be and a lot of times you know like people do they have like strong intentions towards that but i think that there's you know like those people aren't without fault they're not without those downfalls and pitfalls so i think that as we look at this idea of finding purpose we have to also understand that you know it's going to be very different and very dynamic type of topic and and something that i think is like that makes it such a big topic to explore and speak about is the fact that it's made up of different things at least i feel like it's made up of different things um but you know like there there are so many different components that makes it big i think that the fact that i speak about this very much is that that we don't speak about a lot of these topics and the less that we speak about them the less we have the words to articulate around them or the less we feel comfortable even bringing up these conversations i've brought up this topic that I was going to have this topic for this week to, you know, different friends or whatever that I may have come across. And each time it it seemed as though it was a topic that would be discussed in like, you know, like a discussion type of way. But it was also something that seemed to be more fascinating to someone like someone's like, it seems like they were more drawn to the idea of like, wow, this is a topic that I've never spoken about or had anyone ask me in that type of way in that way of exploring it and I think that that's something so big because it's something that we we all seem to be searching for so the fact that we don't talk about it I think that makes it something that magnifies the topic itself but also the fact that it's made up of different things like I said before I feel like you know purpose is something that's made up of all these different components you know like understanding and meaning and I think that there all these different words may seem like they're synonymous to one another but at the end of the day there there are different components within each of those i mean like finding understanding understanding and what maybe it's understanding in your situation at the moment finding meaning meaning and what meaning and you know like the the ideas and thoughts that you have moving forward but purpose i feel like it kind of encompasses all of that and intertwines with all of that and another thing that i think makes this topic something that's so big is that it's constantly lifelong you know it's it's constantly changing so with that constant change and movement it's kind of hard to again like articulate some of the 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 things that we feel to be our purpose because you know like sometimes you feel hey we want to go in that direction but when we get in that direction or start moving in that direction we may stop and find oh shit you know maybe maybe i was supposed to go in that other direction or maybe i should have gone that other direction or you know maybe i could have gone that other direction and uh, i i said that multiple times because i feel like could have and should are more words that are regretful of your decisions and I don't feel like we should should look at me saying shoulds shitting all over myself anyway (laughs) we I don't think that there's anything that we necessarily need to regret as far as making our decisions because everything that we do informs the next step that we make and mistakes are part of that information that we need to take in so it's kind of like this idea where there's there's uh, something I'm going to speak about a little bit later, and it's basically about speaking to yourself as a child. And there's that question or that idea of, like, if I could tell my younger self now what I know now, you know, like, how would that how would that influence things? Or, you know, like, what would I tell myself? And I, I reflect on that, and there's so many things that I would immediately say, like, oh, yeah, I would, I would say this, and I would say this. But if, you know, like, for some reason, you know, like, I encountered myself you know me being eight years old encountered myself as an adult and hearing these things I mean first I would freak out but also I would 
you know, I don't think I would make those same mistakes that I made that that made me who I am today. So, you know, we could always go back and we could always like try to even influence like the mindset that we had before. But you're at the mindset you are now because of the events and the things that precipitated before. So, you know, keep that in mind as we kind of think about the steps that we take forward and the mistakes that we make, you know, like, of course, we could have and we should have or whatever in the past, but the past already happened, you know, so what does that information give us now in this moment? And, and how is it going to inform how we move forward and, and how we start to find this, this meaning or this understanding or this purpose that that we seem to seek so so avidly and I, I feel like another big thing about this is that we are so ingrained and I think that's something from childhood you know from going into school and teachers asking you what do you envision yourself doing a year from now okay now what do you envision yourself doing five years from now and I think that that kind of formed this erroneous idea of just like longevity and the idea that things are going to be constant for that time like one year from now I mean hell like in January of this year no one could have like predicted exactly what I mean like some people could have predicted like you know virologists and things like that but you know like most people couldn't have predicted exactly what would have precipitated in the following months I mean like literally six months later so much shit has gone down and you know it's it's kind of crazy so we can't predict that situations are going to be the same a year from now or five years from now or you know like a week from now or that we're even going to be there like we're even going to be here a week from now or a year from now or five years from now this idea of longevity is something that is you know I think it it hinders the idea of or the possibility that you know like we can live for right now we can find purpose for right now and and I think that's something that's so big because it's not until we face death in some kind of way, whether it's like someone that's very close to us or someone that's connected to us in some way, that we start to put things into perspective. We start to say, you know what, I think I want to start doing this thing. Those are when we make those like those big decisions to kind of like act and do something else because we're hit in a certain way. We're kind of confronted with our mortality and, and the fact that nothing is constant and that we kind of have to live in our purpose now. And I think that as as I thought about this idea of finding purpose, I think a big thing is that, you know, maybe it's not, you know, like lifelong purpose that we, that we need to seek for, but like maybe purpose in this moment, because that's all we know is this moment. We don't know anything else beyond this moment. Now, if you start finding your purpose, you know, like, or like what you feel to be your purpose today, and then like you continue to like move towards that, then, you know, like maybe a year from now, you're still moving in, in flow of what you feel to be your purpose. But we don't we can't predict a year from now that like that's going to be where we find our purpose so start living today and that idea like you know like maybe it's just right now and it's I there's like this phrase that I, I can't seem to remember and I keep trying to bring it back but it's like you know I may not be the one but I'm the one right now or something like that where it's kind of just like that idea of again like you know we we seek so so hard for that that one that kind of that idea of that perfection of that end goal but at the end of the day it's like we may find ourselves avoiding so many other possibilities and so many other things that could in fact lead us towards where we really want to be but it's it's through finding out through those adversities through those challenges through those mistakes that we make that we we, we start forming this better idea of who we are and and where we want to go in in life and i think that there's again like something that's so so much deeper than this that that maybe there's there's something like a, a, a bigger idea like where maybe some people find that finding purpose is something that's okay I'm gonna find purpose in my day-to-day -day life and my you know just where where I'm going in, in this in this physical world and then there's this other idea and, and it didn't dawn on me until I was thinking about this this idea is that there's also this very existential type of idea of finding purpose of you know like again like what am I here for where what does it mean what's what's my purpose in life and I think that's something that's so much bigger and it kind of goes back to that idea of you know maybe we I mean like what's our purpose in life like life is it's it's long or it's short I mean like you know we I guess it's all relativity but at the end of the day it's like we have to think about 
these in, in context where a lot of times that, that existential idea of what's our purpose, it kind of merges into the things that we do in the physical world. I mean, it has to because that's that's kind of where we dwell in this moment. So it's something that, that, that we definitely have to think about. But as you decipher that, as you think about this question of what is my purpose, you know, finding purpose, ask yourself, is this something that I'm, I'm searching for like more in this moment or is it something that I'm searching for on a deeper you know, like soulful connection journey type of thing, because both are very relevant. And I think both also need that space of, you know, what am I feeling right now? And I think that as we reflect even internally on ourselves and, you know, like whether that's through meditation or just like conscious active work through your your mental activity, you can you can just be present with yourself and, and realize that maybe I don't understand the purpose, but Every step that I take, every thought that I make is going to, again, inform my next decisions. It's going gonna, it's gonna to help me make that next move. It's going to help me find better understanding. And I think that when we find better understanding, that's when we start to find our purpose. That's when we start to find the things that are so meaningful for us. And something that I, I went on the internet, obviously, and started to look up this idea of finding purpose because... Uh, this again this topic isn't spoken about so much so I wondered what the internet had to offer as far as finding purpose and there was this article by UC Berkeley that was just ridiculous I clicked on it because I was like oh UC Berkeley they they have some really good studies and it was like more speaking about suggesting how to find your like how to find your purpose and I felt like it was very one-sided it was very you know saying that this is, you know, like the model of success or this is the model of someone's that, that found purpose and then, you know, like trying to put that on everyone. And I, I don't think that's like necessarily the best way because, again, everyone is so unique. Everyone is on their own path and everyone is doing different things to th that that are meaningful for them. So it has to be very unique to the individual. So that article, as I was reading, it, I barely even got halfway through it before I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to read any more of this, but I continued searching and I, I found this article by this person and he essentially speaks about just like these seven questions to ask yourself to help you find your purpose. And I think that some of them are so, so very relevant and I'll attach the link on the social media pages that I plug in at the end of this, but the guy's blog is Mark Manson. I think that it's just like his blog and you can search seven strange questions that help you find your life purpose and I'm sure if you search that on Google, it'll pop right up. But again, I'll link that in the social media pages. But I think that these questions are so unique. And I, I looked at these questions. I resonated with them. I felt that they were really great questions to ask yourself. And I also looked around more and found other people that were asking similar questions. And I started kind of just gathering. It's kind of just like, I guess, gathering data, so to speak, of, you know, just these common questions that seem to be seem to help to initiate that kind of movement towards understanding yourself and, and what you feel to be your purpose. So I took these seven questions specifically from the blog from Mark Manson. And these are the questions. And I think that as as I go through them, maybe some are resonating with you as you've experienced just this natural journey of finding purpose or finding understanding in life, things that we've maybe asked ourselves, things that we've done, things that maybe could help us gain better understanding in what this entire experience is. So uh, the first question, and I rephrase this first question, and the first question was, what struggle or sacrifice are you willing to tolerate? And initially, I mean, like, the, initially the question was, what's your favorite flavor of shit sandwich, and does it come with an olive? So essentially this idea is that all things in life are going to come with challenges. All of the things that we seek and strive towards, they're going to come with challenges. So as we think about the things that we want for ourselves, as we think about our purpose, as we think about these steps that we're moving forward, how much are you willing to sacrifice? How much pain and, you know, like adversities are you willing to take on in this journey? Because it, it will be, there will be adversity, there will be challenges. So ask yourself that question. And I think that will kind of prime you to initiate you to start thinking about these things on a deeper level because I think that on some deeper level, we we know what we want, but there are so many different things. And again, I'm going to speak more about this in a minute, but there's so many things that may stop us, like just fear of not being good at something or just the idea of like not really being sure if that's going to be the right move for us. And there's so many things that stop us. But I think that if we 
recognize the amount of struggle that we're willing to go through to get there or to figure that out, then we're kind of setting a bar for ourselves and allowing us to kind of push ourselves to that limit. And when we experience pain or adversity or challenges, we can say, you know what, I expected this. Yeah, this was something that I expected. And this goes back to that episode about expectations. And, you know, sometimes when we expect challenges or adversity, when we receive them or when we come across them, they're not going to be as damning as if we didn't recognize them at all, at all or if we didn't choose to see them or choose to acknowledge that that was a possibility. So always know that there's there's going to be sacrifice and there's going to be challenges with this moves that you make. So ask yourself how much are you willing to take? You know, how much of that challenge and, and struggle are you willing to take? Another question is, what's true about you today that will make your eight-year-old self cry? And and I think that's, you know, like that goes back to the, the question of, you know, what would you tell your younger self? And what what would that person be? Like, who, who were you as an eight-year-old? And I think that there's something that is so big about that idea because when we're kids, we're so imaginative. We're so, you know, we want to be everything, you know, and we dream of being everything. We dream of, you know, like being all the things that we wish to be. And I think that though that's where true passion exists, that kind of like that inner child, that 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 space where creativity dwells and the the adversities and the challenges and the the people saying no, that kind of is unfazed. You're you're not really affected by it in that way. I mean, like, I guess maybe if you tell an eight year old kid hey, that's dumb, don't do that, then, like, maybe they're going to, you know, obviously feel a way about that. But as an eight-year-old kid, you know, that's free to imagine and explore, we think about all these things of who we want to be and and how we want to be. And I think that through life, it starts to harden us. It starts to make us make sacrifices and, and settle. And not sacrifices in the sense that, like, we're sacrificing things to get to where we want to be we're sacrificing pieces of ourselves we're sacrificing the love that we have for certain things the passions the hobbies the the interest that that sparked something inside of us that keeps us just like so present with ourselves and just like the world around us and we start losing that we start losing that so who what would you say to yourself like what what about yourself now would make your eight-year-old self cry have you lost your passion? Have you lost your will to explore and imagine? Have you given up on that dream to be, you know, a vet or a doctor or an astronaut or whatever it is? And I mean, some, you know, maybe you wanted to be a cowboy astronaut. And obviously, like some of those things are a little imagine imaginative. But at the end of the day, it's like that imagination, that creativity, that's what sparks us and drives us and moves us. So where in your adult life has that started to fade? Has that started to dwindle? And and if you could show yourself to your eight-year-old self, what parts of yourself now would be disappointing to see as as an eight-year-old self? Um, and I think that's something that's so big where it's like, if I were to confront myself and just kind of speak to myself as an eight-year-old, I think that it would be very difficult to kind of just speak about the challenges and the things that maybe the dreams that I've given up on or the things that I've stopped imagining about. I, I know that I used to be always like very just imaginative I mean I still am very imaginative but it's something I'm slowly getting back to you know it's like I I value that and I appreciate that but it's not until we recognize those things because they slowly start to fade away from us they slowly start to fade away from who we are and sometimes it just slips away and we we don't recognize it until it's gone or until it's just like submerged so deep within there that we we don't really look at it so um what yeah ask yourself that what would what would make an eight-year-old you cry if they knew about what you were experiencing another one is what makes you forget to eat and poop and again like this question was aimed more at that idea of being so engulfed and entranced in something that you just you the hours pass you know things just start to melt away you 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 and your activity are just one in the same moving and flowing and nothing else is kind of relevant in that moment and this is something that I've, I mean, as, as I've spoken to different people, like whether they're artists or just people that have different creative hobbies and things like that, they will speak about this idea of just like doing something that they don't realize hours have passed, hours and hours have passed. And we don't really 
get time to do those activities anymore because those aren't activities that pay the bills. Those aren't activities that always, you know, get us to where we feel like we need to go, but they're also something that's so important to us. So I think we have to speak to those or acknowledge at least those things that are meaningful for us, those things that get us so wrapped up that we forget about the world outside of us because that is an indication that this is something we're passionate about. This is something that moves us. So what is that? And and recognize that within yourself. And if you don't have that within yourself, then, you know, like that's okay too. But as long as you recognize it, that's something that I begin to recognize. And I started feeling bad within myself because I, not necessarily bad within myself, but just it was a dawning realization that I... I haven't had that before, you know, like there's so many people, I think maybe I've mentioned this before, but so many people will mention their hobbies and things like that. And I always felt like I didn't really have any hobbies. Like just it, I like music. (laughs) I like, you know, hanging out with people, but you know, like as far as just hobbies, things that get me so wrapped up, you know, that's happened like a couple of times, but it's never been something I've done so consistently. And I think that as we start moving more towards that, we can start kind of moving more towards like the things that are meaningful for us because you know again it's not until we realize that maybe we're lacking that that we can start moving towards it or striving towards it or getting like a little taste of it in some kind of way by exploring ourselves so that's another that's another great thing to ask yourself what makes you forget to eat and poop um another great question that was in this was how can you better embarrass yourself and this is this the idea that again like we don't always do things or initiate the things that we want to do because we feel like we're going to embarrass ourselves we feel like we're going to oh like I can't do that because I've never done it before I'm going to look stupid uh you know you know like all these different things that seem to get us to not even take that step to start that activity and I think that as we start to be more willing to be embarrassed you know take more embarrassment then we're taking that leap more, you know, we're saying, you know what, I'm going to do it anyway, because this is something I feel like I want to do. And if I mess up, then I mess up. If I look, if I look silly, then I look silly. And like, that's totally fine. But I'm going to take this step for me, because this is something I feel like may be something I want for myself. So I'm willing to take that embarrassment. And I think that that kind of goes with that first incident, where if so many people are like, dreadfully embarrassed by things like literally will not want to leave their room leave their house you know like won't want to socialize if they get embarrassed in some kind of way and embarrassment can be something that is a struggle for someone it's, it's one of those things that are challenging and can can be one of those things that that just makes us feel like we're not wanting to do it because there's so much risk involved behind it but I think that once we realize and, and accept and embrace embarrassment, knowing that it's a part of life, then we're more willing to, again, again, like take that step. And it could be something really amazing and you could be really great at it. But it's not until you kind of remove that boundary or that feeling of embarrassment that like you're trying to avoid because nine times out of ten, it's not going to be as embarrassing as you think. <laughs> the next question is, how are you going to save the world? And this is a big question. This is a question that I kind of got stumped on because essentially this is the idea where it's like we want so many things. We want to do so many things. You want to find that purpose in ourselves. But, you know, like how much of us have we, how much time have we given to that idea of like, what do we actually want to do? What do we want to change? How do we, how do we want to do this? How do we want to move forward in this idea of, you know, finding finding purpose you know and I think that when we look for finding purpose it's something that's on a grander scale than us we're looking for something bigger than us something that's like outside of us in some kind of way and I think that that's something that's that's you know so big and I think that's so part of just human nature this idea of just how are we going to do anything in this world and we can seem we can feel so small in that idea of trying to figure out what that is but when we do it, when we when we actually say like, you know what, I want to help save the ocean or save, you know, the wildlife and things like that, hone in on that. You know, it's like it's like figure out what it is that you are passionate about or like feel like you want to do and hone in on it and then do something. You know, it's like it's just really taking that step. And again, like this isn't necessarily 
you know, like that step isn't, I found my purpose now, you know, like I'm going to start saving the world. I found my purpose. No, but it's going to put you in some direction where you're speaking to a part of yourself that's, that's meaningful. You're speaking to that part that's very passionate for you. So if you're acting on something that that's passionate within yourself, then you're moving towards finding better understanding in yourself, finding more meaning in these experiences that you have, which I think, again, help you to find that purpose in yourself. So find out what you're passionate for, find out how you want to save the world and, and hone in on it and never feel like you're too small to do anything and make any change because you have so much power to make all the change that you need to make or want to make. So that's, that's definitely something, but don't let, don't let the idea of something being so big hold you back from doing something that you feel passionate about. The other one is, the next question is, gun to your head, if you had to leave your house all day, every day, where would you go and what would you do? So this is, again, the idea of, I mean, gun to your head, I mean, I'm probably going to go away from you <laughs> with a gun, but the idea is, if you had to, if you just had to get out and had to go do something every single day, all day, like, what would that be? And... I think that's something, so, I mean, like, this idea instantly, I thought, well, hammock, beach, and that's, you know, like, that's, <laughs> that's kind of, like, where I went with that, but I think that that would get kind of boring sometimes, because it's, there's, like, there's, again, like, there's something that's deeper within us that, that calls towards something more, something, like, something greater, and I think that's something that we have to really think about as we answer this question, because, again, my first reaction, gun to your head, we had to leave all day, every day, I'm gonna go to the beach, I'm gonna, like, lay in a hammock, I'm gonna chill out, but I've been, you know, doing a lot of stuff, so maybe that's just where my mindset is, it's, it's, like, wanting to chill, but if I had that chill time, I had that rest, I think that that answer would change, I think that I would want something so much more, I, I don't even know exactly what that would be just yet, but I think that we don't have to figure, I don't think that we have to know that right now. And I think that's the biggest part, again, the biggest part of this idea of finding purpose is that we don't have to know anything because we're never going to know anything. Well, I mean, <laughs> we can know what we feel right now. You know, I, I don't know. I feel like that idea of knowing because everything is and isn't, all truths are relative, so what we know to be reality and existence and our truth is is relative towards what other people feel to be their truth and reality and all that other stuff. So I'm not going to go into that because that's super existential. But the idea is, think about that. You shouldn't have to be forced to at gunpoint. But sometimes just like that idea of like, okay, I have to do this, then it kind of jolts you out of that comfort of your own life and, and starts to get you thinking about these other things that may be possibilities. So the last question that was in this is, if you know you're going to die a year from today, what would you do and how would you want to be remembered? And I think this is something that's such a big question because, again, like going back to that idea of us not really moving towards things or not really taking that action until we're confronted with our mortality of death, that, you know, like that's when we start making these radical decisions, we start putting down the cigarettes, we start, you know, like starting this business that we've always wanted to start when we lose someone close to us because we're we're faced again with our own mortality and the fact that we may not be here tomorrow and it's so unfortunate when we lose people so suddenly but that is life and and it may happen to us and you know it could be us so if you were to die a year from now and that's like that's guaranteeing that you have a year from today which is a lot more of a guarantee than most people have than anyone has no one has that guarantee but if you if you had that guarantee then what would you do and how would you want to be remembered? And I think that's the biggest thing too. Like, how would you want to be remembered? Because we think of ourselves in a certain way. And I think that we also want to be seen in a certain way. And not just seen in a certain way because like we want to be accepted in a certain way. But seen for who we are, our true selves. And, and appreciated and loved for that. But how can we have other appreci people appreciate and love who we are if we're not living by who we are you know if we're constantly kind of like living by the model of other people or living this this false truth that isn't meaningful for us i think that as we sorry i just hit the table but i think that as we you know start 
trying to find a little bit more understanding in in who we are, we start to realize that maybe there's more to us than than what we've thought. And maybe there's more to us that we want to express to the world. Maybe there's more to us that we want other people to see because that's who we are, you know? And, and I think that as we think about the fact that, like, you know, other people are going to be, you know, at our wake or, I mean, yeah, like at our funeral and, and looking at us and trying to remember us in certain ways, what ways do you, do you want to be remembered? And I think that when people are moving towards the things that they are passionate about, when people are true to themselves, when people are accepting of themselves and the things that they want to do and how they want to move forward, it kind of radiates in a certain way and it influences those around you. And that's what creates that impact. That's what creates that that impactful remembrance of this other person. I mean, also like super shitty things that people do is also very impactful and people remember that. But those people probably aren't going to be at your funeral if they if they disliked you that much. But the people that are going to be close to you, that are going to connect to you in a meaningful way, the way that you wish to be connected with, those are the people that are going to, you know, be there and remember you for the way that you want to be remembered. So what way is that? And it's, it's a question that I think we all have to ask ourselves. So that's kind of, that's the seven questions. And again, I think that there, there's so much that, and he kind of speaks about in this, in this article that he has or this blog post that he has just a little more depth about these questions and his ideas about it and as you read it you may resonate a bit more and I know that I'm kind of doing this I I guess like a short version of it but I think these questions are really great in finding your purpose and 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 trying to find your purpose because again like this is such a big topic it's something that I think that it's it's going to constantly change you know like we we may feel like we want something right now and then tomorrow, next week, next month, next year, it can maybe be radically different. And that's okay. Have acceptance for where you are, love yourself for where you are, and keep moving towards yourself and the things that are meaningful for you. But it starts with asking yourself those questions, asking yourself those tough questions that are going to get you to better understand those those places in the corners and the shadows that maybe have collected dust, those places that maybe you haven't really given enough energy to because the world outside is so demanding and and very difficult to kind of get to yourself when everyone else wants something out of you. So take that time, five, 10 minutes to ask yourself some of these questions and maybe one of these questions, just reflect on it and get closer to yourself, get get more connected with yourself and and maybe out of that you'll you'll find some kind of purpose in this life and i think that finding purpose is something that we all seek for and it's it's truly like one of those life goals that we have is is finding purpose whether we kind of consciously believe it or not um i think that it's something that we all kind of live with or think about so yeah such a big topic such a such a heavy topic i think that we will start uncovering some darker places within ourselves, some places that maybe we've turned away from because they, you know, are tough to deal with. But again, like when when we deal with that tough stuff, when we deal with that adversity and those challenges, we start understanding more about ourselves. That that idea of that purpose and that understanding, it starts to form itself a little bit more. Those pieces of those puzzles start coming together a little bit more to form that picture that we're so desperately trying to figure out so that's that's this this idea of finding purpose and there's so much that you know obviously wasn't said there's so much that could have been said and added to this so yeah send me your thoughts ideas if you feel as though you've thought about this idea or this topic then you know like send me your thoughts everything.sunpodcast at gmail.com send me any topic ideas that you may want to hear um you can also join the social media pages which i will again link the article with these seven questions on it too and you can go to that instagram page everything.sunpodcast you can go to twitter at every sun podcast or you can join the facebook group page at everything under the sun with ty and yeah you know rate review subscribe share with people have these conversations with people and enjoy yourselves love you all and i will see you next time